If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. A drunken investment banker slugged a black female transit worker at a Brooklyn subway station before she gave him a black eye with her lunch bag and co-workers cornered him for cops. The suspect, John Francois Coast, age 53, was in the Stillwell Avenue station on Coney Island around 12.15 a.m. when he punched a 56-year-old train operator. Tanya McCray, age 56, had been starting her shift and just leaving the crew room on the public mezzanine at the station when Coast, a senior equity analyst at Tocqueville Assistant Management, tried to get inside. Quote, it's not a public area. He was apparently drunk. She pushed the door so it clicked and locks, and he punched her in the face at least twice. McCray, a 21-year veteran at the MTA and train operator, fought back and began striking Coast with her lunch bag, which had a thermostat inside, leaving the suspect with a black eye and several scratches. After another transit worker came to her aid, the banker allegedly ran away down the train platform. Coast was arrested and charged with assaulting a transit employee, harassment, and menacing. He was released without bail, and his next court date was set for March. Miss McCray stated that she was taken off guard by the attack. Quote, I didn't see him punch me. I didn't see the punch. It happened so fast. Miss McCray, who suffered bruises and was taken to a local area hospital, stated that she hopes her attacker is punished. Quote, I hope justice is served. I hope he sees jail time. It's not fair that people think that they can assault us and think that it's OK. It's not OK. We're just here to do our job. The Transit Worker Union plans to make a show of force at Coast Court hearing. So I just want to give a shout out to uh, Miss McCray and her bloodline because something obviously within her automatically knew not today. And she directly fought back. And I just want to reiterate, they stated it was a MTA a worker manager, somebody that was over Miss McCray. And they stated specifically that the area that the white male was trying to get into was not a public area which means that you or me anybody that does not have the credentials that is not a worker is not supposed to be back there but he was trying to gain access to an area notice he was drunk trying to gain access to an area of which that black woman was at so like i said before um i'm looking at this a little bit vastly differently because I've seen a multitude of instances, uh, you know, such as stories and articles where you have had guys like this in some type of alcoholic, drunken stupor, rage or whatever it is, and things take place. Like I said before, uh, for a case in point example, let's look at a lot of these colleges that a lot of women go directly to. And all of these parties and all of these things, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard of the parties and the things that take place after, during, or before some of these parties. And how a lot of women, in a sense, um, have negative things that take place, right? So like I said, I'm not going to put it past them at all. And this is, uh, again, why I told a lot of black women, and I've always advocated and told black women, like, yo, make sure to, you know, get your, your license to carry. And even if you can't carry, learn some self-defense training, regardless of whatever state that you are in, it is always legal <laughs> to go to, uh, 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 don't care if it's crap, McGraw might be pronouncing it wrong, Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, wh whatever it is. Right. You can easily find and go to a class and pay, you know, that weekly or that monthly fee to start, you know, learning some hand to hand combat training so that you can start to feel confident and secure to know that, yo, if potentially something happens, at least I might be able to do something. You're not fully defenseless. You're at least able to do something. Like I said, I'm not saying you're going to be Batman out here and you're going to be able to defeat every single dude, but at least you'll be able to do something. Right. 
you can at least, you know, stave off, you know, some of, you know, the the attacks or whatever it is so that, you know, hopefully somebody that's around can hear what's going on to see what's going on, step in and, you know, help out. And uh, as I told Black one before, you got to pay attention to the people that allow these things to take place. Notice that he was released without a bail. Released without a bail, even though he specifically decided he didn't attack nobody else. I'm pretty sure because the train stations, I've been to New York train stations. <laughs> they're they're usually busy. They're usually packed, right? Because it's a lot of people. It's a pretty condensed, you know, city, right? State, whatever. And um, there's a lot of people there. So out of all of the people that were more than likely there in that area, because there were other workers, he specifically targeted this black woman. Why? Why? He could have tried to get into some other door that was there. He could have, you know, tried to go after another worker that was there, not advocating for it. I'm just listing it as an example. But why didn't he do that? There were male workers there that he could have easily, if he wanted to, you know, sit up there and have a ground match with, he could have easily did that. But you saw what took place, right? When he decided to fight her, go after her, and assistance came by other MTA workers, more than likely males, what did he do? He ran away from the scene. And this is the main thing that I tried to state how it is that when men are there, when men are present, usually guys who want to potentially try something with a woman, they're not, they're going to think twice because it's like, ah, oh, man, this is, this is going to be a little bit different. I don't think I'll be able to, it ain't really that much of a, I really want to, but yeah, it's not, it's not really that much of a, ha it's, it's not worth it right now. I'll wait. And that's usually what they do. Or if they're in the midst of trying to do something and then men start rolling up or even just one dude, this is when they start getting frightened and scared. Magically, all that testosterone that they got for that woman, it automatically dissipates when a man shows up. Why is that? Like I said, the ones that showed up were an automatic deterrent. He immediately stopped and ran for the hills because he was not about that life. He was not trying to fight whoever was there. He was that much afraid that he sobered up so quick. He was like, oh, whoo, my life might be in danger. <laughs> he might give me a hook. Oh, he might, you know, knock me out. I might end up on World Star. Let me get up out of here. And like I said, this is a wealthy, a wealthy Caucasian individual that decided to do this specifically to this black woman. But why, though? And I'm already, I already know that a lot of people are going to say, oh, race doesn't have anything to do with it. It was just the fact that he was not given an excuse, but he was intoxicated. You know, when people are intoxicated, they're not in their right minds. And because they're not in their right minds, people will just decide to do things that normally they wouldn't really do. Like I said, I'm not giving an excuse, but I'm just listing that it really wasn't about race. Why does race have to be, you know, directly in here? This is why I, I you know, I dislike stories like this because... You know, we have a lot of craziness out here. We have a lot of crazy people out here. And, you know, we just need to focus on the crazy people and not so much on race because, you know, there's craziness in, um, in you know, in every single race, not just in one race. So let's not just, you know, condense this down to a story just about race. And let's let's just look at it as that this was a crazy, intoxicated individual who, you know, was in the wrong and decided to go after a woman. Matter of fact, let's not even say woman. He decided to go after a person. And, you know, as I've told you guys and shown you guys, right, I've, I've done a multitude of videos um, advocating for black women, no matter which angle I decide to come from, you know, you'll see the comments that you are able to see directly in front of you. And uh, this is just a small sliver of... Uh, a lot of the comments that I've actually received that have been negative uh, towards me, um, in a sense, feeling as though that I'm doing the right thing, the same thing that I'm doing directly in this video. Um, but, you know, the main thing that I want to state is to, you know, a lot of those uh, black women that understand the videos that I do that's been supporting me for about like, you know, four years that I've been doing this. Much love, respect and appreciation to uh, you and yours. 
uh, to some of the black women that, you know, have rolled up directly to the platform and, um, you know, they wanted to show their thanks um, because of the video that I did. Again, much love, respect and appreciation to uh, you and yours, to the others that um, leave messages like this and many other uh, messages in a sense, even trying to blame me and say that I am part of the reason as to why uh, a lot of these things are happening to black women. Um, you know, I, I guess it is what it is. You know, if, if you need a villain, I will be that villain.